Good morning. This is our Sunday School lesson for May 1st, and the subject is Glory of the New Covenant. Now, Angela is, is going to give us our scriptures for today and a quick prayer uh, and introduction. Glory of the New Covenant. Lesson text, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 7 through 18. Related scriptures, Exodus 34, 29 through 35. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 13 through 18. Time, probably A.D. 56, place from Macedonia. Your golden text. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Introduction. The old covenant that Israel was under was built around the mosaic, mosaic, mosaic. Law, mosaic law that God gave to the Israelites in the wilderness after their exodus from Egypt. This law was binding until Christ came and ushered in the new covenant, which we are under today. The Jews were devoted to the law and cherished it. Under the new covenant, the law is still important in that it expounds, expounds on holiness, but we are not bound by it. There was a stark problem which the, with the law. It demanded absolute adherence and obedience to its provisions. The law, the law thus shows the people their sins, but it provides for atonement and forgiveness in only a limited way. It pointed ahead to God's ultimate solution for our sins, but it did not provide that solution itself. The new covenant, however, set aside the old and revealed the fulfillment, fullness of God's grace and mercy. Since we could not satisfy the demands of the old covenant, Jesus fulfilled it for us and gave us a new covenant that reconciles us with God by grace through faith. The new covenant is not about keeping a set of rules, but about trusting and loving the Lord Jesus Christ. Most heavenly gracious Father, once again, Lord God, we just want to come thanking you first for just watching over us on last night, Lord God, and you woke us up early this morning. Father God, we just thank you for another day, Lord God. Right now, we ask that you would come into this Sunday school right now, Lord God, we ask that you would touch the teacher as she reveals your word to, to us right now, Lord God. Take her out of self, Father God. Father God, just continue to touch her, bless her, and then, Lord, anoint her with your words that you would have her to say this morning, and that someone may be saved and touched by your word, Lord God. We just thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Now, we're going to begin with our Sunday school lesson for today. Now, I want... As Ash Angela was reading the introduction, I don't know, I was touched by the introduction and, her, and the prayer, even though we know she just prayed, but I am going to say a quick prayer of thanksgiving to Jesus for forgiveness, for fulfilling the old covenant. Lord, I thank you for the fulfillment that we could not do. I thank you, Father, for forgiveness. I thank you for the new covenant, Father. I thank you that you loved us so much, Father, that, and you knew that we could not feel that covenant, and I just thank you for full, fulfilling that, Father. Father, I just thank you today. I praise you today. I lift you up and I magnify you because I am so thankful. I'm thankful for Jesus for going to the cross, dying for our sins, and rising in our life. I thank you for the new covenant, Lord. Father, I thank you. I ask you to touch me right now as I expound on your word, Father. Give me the words that you would have me to say. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Glory of the new covenant. Now, the scriptures for today begin with 2 Corinthians 3, verse 7. But if the ministration of death, written and engraved in the stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his continent, which glory was to be done away. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? In other words, more glorious. For if the ministration of condemnation be glorious, 
glory, much more does the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect, by reason of the glory that excels. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. Seeing then that we have such hope, we use our great plainness of speech. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds was blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is up on their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. Okay, so our lesson today, we see Paul. Now, Paul is explaining the old covenant and the new covenant and a way like comparing the two. Because what he's really trying to do, let people know that now you are no longer bound by the Old Testament. We are under the New Testament. And the reason being, no one could keep the old anyway. So why are you trying to hold on to something that you could not keep and cannot keep? Because salvation do not come from keeping a set of laws. And I thank the Lord for that. Because if so, we would all be lost. None of us, even Paul, even Moses trembled when he, when he received the Ten Commandments. Because he knew he wasn't able to keep them all. But for whatever reason, the Israelites still think that they could keep them. In Paul's day, they were, up to Paul's day, they were still trying to hold on to that old covenant. Instead of being thankful that uh, Christ had fulfilled it, and they was no longer under, but they was under grace. All they had to do was accept Jesus by faith, and, and they would be saved. But for some reason, they was trying to hold on to it, and that's the way people are. They always think something old is better, because that's what they're used to. And sometimes we hold on to something because we think it it give us a little power and authority because we can say, oh, I can do this. I No, no. You might have kept one or two or you might have kept, t it was 10, so you might have kept nine. But even if you kept nine, you're still bound to the, for the tenth one that you, whatever the tenth one that you broke because we have to keep them all. And God being so loving and so kind, knowing that we could not do it, he never, and he knew from the beginning that we couldn't do it. But he, he was just trying to point him to us to the one that could do it. And, it. and so the Old Testament did exactly what God wanted it to do. And it was to point us to Christ to let us know that we're not able to fulfill it. But he had someone that was able and willing to fulfill it on our behalf. And we just want to say thank you, God, for, the, for Jesus fulfilling it. Now what we said, Paul is comparing the old and the new. The old covenant was given to Israel in the wilderness after their exodus from Egypt. Now the law was binding until Christ came and ushered in the new. Yes, it was binding until Christ came. The new covenant is, is superior over the old. That's why they say it's the old covenant had glory, but the new covenant is more glorious. Definitely, it was glorious because it was given by God. Now, if God gave it, there was glory in it. And it was nothing wrong with the old covenant. It's that people could not keep it. It did exactly what God wanted it to do. The, the old covenant is, is supposed to point us to God. Now, the old covenant was the ministry of death. And it was craved in, in stones. So, and which was not bad. Now, it was crave, uh, I said crave, the, uh, the word is not crave, crave. I'm having a problem with that word. Carved, carved in stone. But it was carved in stone 
That meant we could not change it. There was nothing we could do because it was intended to stay until Christ came, and it did. Now, like I said, it fulfilled its purpose. It did exactly what God intended for it to do. It showed people that they could not please him on their own. So why would you keep trying to please God on your own when he's already showed you that you cannot do it? And he pointed you to someone that could do it. Now, the old covenant revealed our sin. It showed us what we did wrong. And we know when we did wrong and when we do wrong. And that's what the old covenant did. And the old covenant was a ministry of death because it only condemned us. And it had no saving power. Now, the old covenant condemned us, condemned us, and it condemned us to death. Why would you want to keep something that is condemning you to death when you have a choice, a choice of a new covenant that give life and give hope? Now, trying to keep the law is fruitful. No one can keep all the commandments of the law on their own. They need a Savior. We needed a Savior, and thank God he knew we needed a Savior. We know we needed someone to help us, and he did. He provided just what we needed. Because like we said, even if you kept most of the law, the law is not divided into categories that we work on to get better. It is a reflection of God's complete holiness and righteousness that he requires from us. Now, the, the Old Testament, that was the reflections of God's complete holiness and righteousness. So we cannot do part of it and say we have done what God wanted us to do. No, we have to do the whole thing. Now, in terms of obedience, we were to keep it. The law showed to showed us that as one was the law was given as one unit, and to violate one is violating the whole. And we see that was no mercy when the law in itself, but it but that was condemned condemnness to those who violated it. Everyone was guilty of violating God's perfect law. Nevertheless, no one can say that Moses' law is holy. No one, because it is holy in its own and righteous and good, but breaking it condemns us and God will judge us. Now, we know one thing about the covenant, and that is that no one can keep it. So what Paul is only trying to do is point us to someone, to something new, something that would help us. And so we see when Moses went to get the, up, went to the mountaintop to get the covenant, when he got the covenant, he came while he was getting the covenant. The people was already breaking the law. Now, they had, while he was receiving the covenant from God, they was breaking the law. And the law said, that should have no other God before me, and that should not make of any graven images. What was they doing while the covenant was being given? And we then we see that God told Moses, you need to go back down and check on the people because something is going on in the camp. So Moses went back down to check on the people, and that's what they was doing. But thank God, when Moses went down, he did not carry the covenant into the camp with him. He, he was so upset with the people that he broke the first cut set of rules. He broke it. And we are so grateful that Moses broke it because had he entered the camp with those with the covenant in his hand, Israel would have, a nation of Israel would have just been wiped out. They all would have been condemned because the covenant had already condemned them. But thank God that he broke it and he did not carry it, carry it in with him. So he talked to the people and got them to settle down. And he went back up to the mountaintop. And he, when he went back to the mountaintop to talk to God, he asked God for, he begged God for, for, for grace and mercy for the people. Because he knew that the people, even him, he could not keep it, the, those commandments. So what God did, God was so gracious and loving. So what he did, he gave Moses a new set of commandments. To carry back to the people. And, and he also instituted a sacrificial uh, a ceremony that was showed the, to, for forgiveness for the people. And he and uh, there was a, a goat that they would put the sins of the people on once a year. And they would send the goat out and that was like carrying away their sins. 
So God even provided for them while they was in the wilderness, while they was under the old covenant. Even though we hear people say that there was no mercy in the old covenant, but that was mercy right there. Because had God not given, shown mercy and, and instituted that sacrificial ceremony, Israel could have been wiped out because they all broke the covenant. They're all broken. And today, we still break it. We cannot keep it. But thank God, our salvation is not based on keeping a set of rules. But we are saved by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Now we have that faith and trust in Jesus, we are all right. And that's all he was trying to get them to see. That the old covenant was fine. It did what God intended for it to do. But now we have a new covenant. Be thankful for the new covenant and, and do what the new covenant tells us to do. You have to let go of the old one. The old one did what it was supposed to do. But today, there's still, that when I said today, there was a pause day when he was writing. They were still trying to keep that old covenant. And they still thought they could keep it. And, but, so therefore, when they were talking about the veil that was on, on Moses' face, now the veil was there. Because the glory that they was that they saw was fading, and that fading glory was representing the fading of that old old uh, test old covenant, that it wasn't gonna last. And the glory that they saw in Moses' face, it wasn't meant to last. But when they saw Moses, they could not look upon Moses because of the glory that was shown shining on his face. But Moses knew that the glory was fading, so Moses put this veil on. And when he put the veil on, the people could look up on him. And so right now, they even in uh, Paul's day, they were still thinking that even though the glory was gone, and that he was telling them not only is the glory gone, but the temple is gone, the priesthood is gone, the covenant is gone. But why are you still trying to keep something that is not even here? But what they needed to do was turn to God in faith, and that's what we have to do today. That we have a covenant of mercy, a covenant of grace, a covenant that do not condemn, but a covenant that give life. Because the spirit, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And the covenant that we are under is, God, is Christ. It's a is spirit of the, uh, it is the spirit of the Lord. And we know that the, when the covenant that they had was set in stone, but our covenant is set on our heart. It's greater than our heart. It's a fleshly covenant. It's a covenant of mercy. It's a covenant of love and grace. But what they was under, they showed God as being over them. They had a God over them. But we have a God in us, a God for us. But they had a God, that, when they saw that God, they saw God that was against them. But we see a God that is for us, a God that loves us, a God that want to save us. And one thing we know about God, we have a loving God, a happy God. God loved people. He loved mankind. God said he did not get no pleasure out of killing people, but he loved people. He wanted everybody to be saved. So he had mercy for us. He, he loved giving life. That's what God is. It, he loved when people are saved. He's happy when someone, when people come to the, him. He's happy when people come and get our life to Christ, get our life. But he get no glory out of people, out of the unrighteous not coming to him, not being saved. He get no glory out of that. He get glory when people are saved. So therefore, we have a loving God, a gracious God, a kind God, a faithful God, a God that would never leave nor forsake us. Why would you try to hold on to something that is against you, that is not, okay, when I say against you, that is not providing a way for you because it was a stone. It's nothing they could do. There was no provision for them in that old covenant. But in the covenant we have today, we have a mercy. We have mercy. We have a loving, kind, forgiving God. And all we have to do is come to God in faith. Turn to Jesus Christ. Jesus is able to bear all of our sins. He's able to bear the sins of the old people, the people in the old covenant. He was able to bear the sins of the, of the people in the new covenant. He's able to bear it all. He bore it all on the cross. So why not turn to Jesus and be saved instead of trying to hold on to some uh, rules and regulations that you cannot keep? 
and try to save yourself. No, let go. So it's always a time to let go. There's a time to hold on, but it's always a time to let go. All you need to do, do is let go. And once you let go, that veil will be lifted from your, just like the veil was lifted from Moses' face, that veil on your heart will be lifted from your heart. And therefore, you will be able to see the mercy in, in Jesus Christ. You will be able to see what Jesus did for you. And you can turn to him in faith. And once you turn to him in faith, he will never turn you away. If you turn to him in faith, you will be saved. And that's what the new covenant is all about. And that's what Moses was trying to get the people to understand. That that was, that the old covenant was a covenant of condemnation. It was a covenant of death. But the covenant, even though it was a covenant of condemnation, it condemned the people. But still, it showed, it was trying to point them to someone that could help them. Someone that could save them. Someone with the power to save them. Because the old covenant had no power to save but we know Jesus had power to save. And that's all the old covenant was trying to do. That's what the Mosaic covenant was. It was just there to show people their need. And sometimes, I don't care how you try to point out a need to some people, they refuse to see. Because they want to be able to say, I did it on my own. Brothers and sisters, you don't have to do this on your own. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is a good day to accept him. Do not put off today for tomorrow, because tomorrow is not promised. But accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you will be saved. Now, I'm not telling you not to do the, your best and not to do what you can best to be like Christ, because he wants us to be better. He wants us to do what is right. He don't, now, it's not, I'm not saying it's, you can go around saying you, it, it's okay to kill somebody. It's all right to steal it's all, but it's not. He, God do not expect us to go around stealing and killing because we're under the new covenant. But what he's saying is, he doesn't ex no, he know we can't keep it on our own. But we have Jesus Christ living in us. We have the spirit of God in us, which enables us to do what the old covenant could not do. But the people in the old covenant, they could not do. They could not keep it on their own. But we don't have to try to keep anything on our own because we have Jesus with spirit living in us. The spirit that will help us and empower us to do the things that we cannot do as long as we're willing to try. So we have Christ living in us where they didn't have it. So accept Jesus. And then you don't have to worry about trying to keep a set of rules. But you want to keep progressing. Now you want them each day to try to be better and better. And the way you do that is by looking at in the mirror. Just like you look in a mirror and you see yourself when you're dressing. Now the word is the mirror that we need. We need to look in the mirror of the word each day. And each day as we look in the mirror and we look at we see Jesus, each day we should be coming more and more like him. And that's what it means when they say from glory to glory. Each day we go from one from one uh, degree of glory to another higher degree of glory. Because each day we be, should be coming more and more like Jesus. And the only way we can become more and more like Jesus is by his word. To look in the mirror of his word. Look in his word and try to be more and more like him. Look in his word and see what he wants us to do. How he wants us to be. He wants us to be loving. If you look in the word, we'll see how he, Jesus loved. If you look in the word, you see how Jesus was patient. If you look in the Word, you will see how Jesus was forgiven, how Jesus was caring. And that's what we need to do. We need to look in the Word of God. And once we look in the Word, we need to be growing more and more like Jesus. Because once we grow more and more like Jesus, we'll begin to lay aside that old man and begin to pick up the new man. And once we look into the Word of Jesus... The, the world and things of this world become more and more dim to us. We won't even care about those things that we used to care so much about. Why? Because we're growing in Christ. We're progressing. We're becoming more glorious. From we're going from one degree of glory to another degree of glory, which means we're becoming more and more like Christ. And that's the purpose of the word for us to grow. We need to stay in the word. We need to have the mind of Christ. You want the mind of Christ to deal richly in us to dwell richly in us. And in order for the mind of Christ to, uh, to 
Oh, uh, the abide in us, we need to know what it is. The only way we can know is in his word. He has provided for us. He has provided the word for us. And we should be in the word daily. We should be in the word daily. So we can be more and more like him. Don't let don't be stubborn like the old people in the Old Testament that want to stick to the Old Testament or the old covenant. I mean, they want to stick to that old covenant, even though they knew that they could not keep it. They had never kept it. So what make you think you can keep it? Now a way has been provided for you. A way have, since a way has been provided, accept that way. Accept that way, the new way. And go on with life. Stop trying to hold on to something you cannot do. Now we know there are things in the past that's good. We're not saying there was nothing was good about the old covenant. We're not saying that because yeah, just like I said earlier, no, we should not steal, we should not kill, and we should not have no other God before God. Now God is one. The He's the only real, true, and living God. But what He's trying to get us to see. I don't care what the Old Testament say. You cannot do it on your own. He's not saying you can't do it, but he's saying you can't do it on your own. But he provided a way. He sent his only son to us. He sent his only son to die for us. Why? Because he loved us so much. Just like I said, we have a loving God, a happy God. And what makes him happy is to see men saved. He wants men to be saved. That's why he sent his son so we can be saved. And when every time someone is saved, he is happy. The heaven is praising when someone comes to him. Because there's a life that is saved. Just he don't get no pleasure out of people not out of out of people not being saved, but he gets pleasure out of people being saved. So there's a reason to love God. There's a reason to accept Jesus Christ by faith. You accept him so you can be saved. We don't, who want to lose their life and go to hell? When you can be saved and go and spend your eternity with Jesus, with God. Because he had provided a way. He done exactly what he needed to do. Even when he provided that Old Testament, it was a purpose. It was a purpose because had he not provided it and people saw that they could not keep it. Well, some people saw that they could not keep it. Now, for the people that saw that they could not keep it. Now, when the new covenant came, that was a glorious day. and That was glory to them. Because there was glory in the in, to see it. There was glory in that new covenant. What I mean, there was beauty in the new covenant. That new covenant is beautiful because it had mercy. That new covenant, covenant had grace. And that new covenant had love. We see the love of God in that new covenant. But we could not see all this in the old because it, not, it did not provide the power that we needed. But the new covenant provides exactly what we need. And, and just like I said, it is written on our heart. For the old covenant was written in stones. And by being written on our heart, now, I, now if, they would, if the old covenant, people in the old covenant would just accept Jesus, they can put that veil off the will lead out the heart, and they would be new in Christ. And you can become new in Christ right now if you accept him. And that old hard-heartedness will be gone. Take that veil off your heart, and the only way you can do it is through the love of Christ, and he will do it. Come to Jesus. Come to him right now. Come to him. Because remember, the new covenant is, is by the Spirit of God. That new covenant have the Spirit of God in it. He's the one that's keeping it. And, one, but, and again, what the Spirit is, there is love. There is liberty. There is freedom. Freedom to love God. Freedom to accept God. Freedom to do what God wants you to do. Amen. Now, I hope I was able to show you the difference in the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, and the New Covenant. Just like I said, the new, co the Old Covenant did exactly what God wanted it to do. And that was show people that they could not keep it at all. It was pointing the way to God. It was pointing to Christ. And once Christ came and died on the cross, that Old Covenant that was that was the end of it, the old covenant, and that was the beginning of the new covenant. So we want to thank Christ. We want to thank God for sending His darling Son Jesus to die for us, that we would show us that we could not keep that old covenant, but by mercy and grace we accept Jesus through faith 
and we will be saved. We can keep the new covenant through Christ because he is our Savior. He provided a way for us. He provided the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is what empowers us to do the things that God wants us to do. Amen. Thank you. Amen.